I have trimmed the, uh, the quilted piece now that I've got the quilting done. I just squared it up and tried to make it even because um, it was kind of wavy on the edges because, you know, I was just following my painting and that wasn't perfect. But I've got it trimmed and before I put the binding on, I attached what will become the hanging mechanism on the back. And uh, you can see the quilting maybe shows up a little better on the, on the dark green side. Uh, <clears throat> these are going to be what is used for hanging this. And I take a piece of dowel after it's all done and that'll go tucked in to the uh, uh, little pockets there. And then you can use a nail to hang it on the wall rather than making a sleeve where you'd need to have something to hang it on both ends. This this will do it with just one nail in the middle. And all these are is, uh, in this case, because it's a small quilt, I cut four inch squares of fabric and I matched the backing and pressed them in half so they're triangles. Here's the, here's the fold line and then I just pinned them onto the corners. Now when I attach the binding, those will get sewn in to the whole thing and uh, that'll take care of that. And uh, for the binding, I'm using black. And I think that helps to, uh, you know, blend with the black and the butterfly. So black binding, I have used, this is straight grain binding uh, and for a straight edged quilt, I find it easier to use straight grain. I think I get a better finish. Um, I cut the strips two and a half inch wide, press them in half. I did have to join them at, because I, I cut this with a fabric, which is 40-ish, 42 inches, and uh, that wasn't enough to go around the whole thing. So I I did a join seam on the bias and pressed it open, fold it in half and connect. So that's the binding. Now I'm going to attach it from the top. I'm going to line it up with the, uh, with the edge and I don't pin. I'll stitch close to the edge. This is, um, uh, my goal here is to make a relatively small binding on the front. It'll be bigger on the back, but that way I won't, uh, that extra fabric will help and I'll show you uh, on the back will help and I'll show you that in a, in a bit. So I'm going to go, and if you, you know, I'm, I'm notorious for not measuring my binding. I just uh, put it on and say, yep, that's enough. So that's how I do it. <clears throat> uh, so we'll start attaching the binding. Now I want to uh, also show you how to uh, join the binding at the end. Uh, on a big full size quilt it's easier because you've got a longer length. Here I've got a relatively short section. So uh, I am gonna bind it on this side so when I start attaching the binding, it's going to be, I'm going to leave a pretty long length and I'm going to start pretty close to the corner uh, because I need some loose tails to uh, do the joining and I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm going to start pretty close to the corner and I'm stitching it on from the front and then I'm going to later come back and stitch it on from the front. I'm using uh, the same thread that I did the quilting with. Uh, if you're so inclined, you could switch to black for this part, but then you're going to have to switch back to the green uh, for the other part. So I'm just leaving the, the thing in there and hoping I have enough bobbin to make it all work. So uh, first thing is I switched after all my quilting. I change. I have to change the um, stitch length on this machine, it's up and down. 
highest up is shortest stitch, lowest down is longest stitch, so somewhere around there. There are some machines where it doesn't slide up and down, it's a screw, a bigger screw that goes in or out uh, to lengthen and shorten the stitch, but on this one it's an up and down. Some of the other uh, machines will have uh, stitch length down here. Uh, most singers, I believe, it's, it's always up here on the column and it's either a matter of moving it up and down or screwing it in and out that changes that stitch length. So I'll put it in what I think is going to be about right for some uh, decent stitches there. I'll get this dowel out of the way. And by the way, these dowels you can buy at the craft store. They're relatively inexpensive and they're easy to cut. Just a pair of uh, uh, pruners will, uh, garden pruners, cut that right off easily and you don't even have to worry about a saw. Uh, so to start with, I'm going to... Uh, I have put in a pretty skinny uh, width presser foot and I'm going to use it as my guide. Uh, my machine doesn't have any lines on its throat plate here, but uh, I'm just going to use the machine foot. If I keep the, if I keep the edge of the foot right on the edge of that fabric and I keep the binding and the and the edge of the quilt lined up I should have no problem keeping a nice narrow uh, and I, in this case that's what I'm looking for nice and narrow so I'll start stitching that stitch length looks pretty good now <clears throat> you need to miter the corners and that means that your foot needs to, or your stitch needs to end at a point. Let me get a little closer here so you can see this. So I need to stitch up to the, about the corner of the quilt, maybe about here, with a little bit extra. So the way I'm going to make that work for me is I'm going to finger press. What I'm going to do is fold this over at a 45 and finger press. We're going to kind of give it a nice crease there. So now, and I don't know if that's going to show, but there's a line here when my I stitch and I go right up to that line and that's where I know to stop. Now, if you can't uh, see the line, you can also mark it with a pin. If that is helpful to you, then you know where to stop. I can see it, so I'm not going to use a pin. The problem with this machine is I can't do a back tack. Um, it's, um, it's, it doesn't have a reverse in it. So if I had a machine, if I was using a machine that did reverse, when I got to the end there, I'd reverse. But I don't have that here. So what I'm going to do is stitch right up to it, or pretty close to it, and then I'm going to shorten my stitch length way up. And just do a couple of tight stitches there. And then I'm going to lift pull back a little bit, and give it a couple more stitches, and that'll hold it in place. Now, I have to take it out. I'm going to get these extra threads out of the way. I have to take it out, and now I'm going to turn the corner. So, the way this works, let me zoom out again so we can see this. Oh, there's my iron beeping. Okay, so I'm going to fold it back this way. Now, add a 45, so this edge is 
makes a straight line with the, with the whole edge of the quilt. And then this folds back straight along this edge. Now, I need to start stitching again where I ended over here. So, if it helps, you can fold this and make another crease line here so that you know where to start. So, let's see if we get back in here. Can you see that little crease? So, if I start the width of the foot over, right at that crease, that's the place I need to start stitching. Let me get my needle up so I don't... So, again, I've got my stitch length really short just because I don't have a... Now I'm going to put it back to normal and stitch along. Oop. I'm turning my foot the wrong way. Now that will become the mitered corner when I flip it over to the back. slow so that you are as accurate as you can be when you're uh, particularly when you're making a small quilt the um, mistakes in the binding waviness or, or you know in, in unevenness is really quite visible so you want to be be careful and take this part pretty pretty slow and steady get that extra thread off of here I'm gonna turn that around let's zoom back out and show that one more time so stitched over to here the edge goes up straight along so it's even with this edge. Get it so that fold is just to the edge. Give it a finger crease. That always helps. And if you want, you can even take it up to the ironing board and give it a good press. Uh, if, you, if, you don't, if your fabric doesn't want to do a finger crease, fold it back down. That's where we'll sew. Then I give it a fold this way. And right in that fold there is where I'm going to start stitching again. length again. And it, away we go. So it's just like that until I get to the last corner. Or at, I'll finish the last corner and then I'll show you how this gets joined. So I'm going to take Take a pause on the camera for a few minutes, and I'll be right back to show you the joining part after we get our, after I do all the, the the other two corners are going to be just the same, and I'll be back. So now I'm at the point where I've got all the four corners done, and I need to join these two ends, 
and I want that to be joined evenly and at a 45 degree angle so it lays nice and flat. Uh, so how do you do that? You don't have to measure, believe it or not. So here's the, the two ends and I want the join to be somewhere in the middle of those two ends. And so I've left myself extra. I'm going to cut some of that off. Notice I didn't measure. I do want that edge to be straight. So let me try that again. Now, this one overlaps this one. And I want this piece to be overlapping this piece by two and a half inches. And I say that because that's the width that I cut my binding. But I don't have to measure that. I can unfold it, put it on top at the very edge of this binding and use it to measure this binding piece. So I'm not measuring with the yardstick, I'm measuring it with a piece of the binding itself. Now the two pieces overlap each other by the exact right amount. Now I will sew them together. Let me get them open. They go together now you have to pay attention to the uh, the, the crease this part of the crease is the outside so you don't want to cross piece them with them you want to put the outsides together and these go together 90 degrees to each other. Can you see that? And now I sew from there to there and that makes, and I'll show you. Uh, let me get it pinned and then I'll show you the sewing. Okay, I've got it pinned so that it uh, stays pretty level and even. This is easier on a bigger quilt because I could leave more of this, these ends open and I wouldn't have to pull as much. Uh, but, so you're going to go from point to point. This uh, um, will create the uh, miter or the 45 for that. Now you could very definitely uh, mark this line rather than doing what I'm doing and eyeballing it. And I'm probably not going to turn out perfectly straight, but bear with me. I didn't have a white pen here, so I'm just eyeballing it. The other way you could have done it was uh, finger press a crease in it that you could see. those off, take some pins out, and if you look, now that's exactly the right size. All I have to do is trim this excess off, and I can also press that seam open. So. Let's trim the excess. Let me just finger press that open and then give it a good fold over. And there you can see we've joined the fabric and makes a nice edge. You don't need any special tools for that. You don't need uh, any complicated math formulas. You just cut it uh, the uh, extra length that you cut it is the width of the binding. So now we go back and we'll finish stitching that binding down. Again, I'm being, 
I'm being slow and careful because I want it to be even. And I'd like it to be pretty close to the edge without having too much extra hanging out. Next step is going to be folding it to the back and pinning it. Now, I, on a full-size quilt, I'll often do it without pinning it. I just fold it under, but it really does make it a nicer finish if you pin it. So. Show you that. So what we're going to do is this is going to fold around to the back and that's your binding. Now around these corners where we mitered it, I'm going to fold it over this way so that That is kind of you gotta you gotta take your time on this part. But see how I'm folding it so that there's there becomes a 45 degree line there, and I, I'll pin all of that, and uh, then uh, once I'm happy with the way it looks, I'll look at the front, I'll look at the back, I'll keep pinning and and playing with my corners and trying to get those all perfect. I could even take it to the ironing board and press before I fold so I get it as straight as possible along the edges. I'm going to do some time, take some time and pin this all to the back and then I'm going to come back and show you how to finish it on the front. Okay, so there it is pinned. I've got uh, several pins around the edge just to be sure I can keep it nice and straight. Uh, some people like to use little clips, uh, and those work fine too. Uh, whatever, whatever method you want to use to get those under there. Now, I could, at this point, from the back, I could stitch this down by hand. And I often do that, and particularly if it's a, if it's a bed quilt or a quilt that's going to go in a show. Uh, I will often do it by hand because a lot of... Uh, a lot of people think it's better that way. Uh, <clears throat> lately, I've been feeling like it comes out just as nice if I do it by machine. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So we do this again now that it's pinned to the back. And I'm going to do the stitching from the front. Now, on this machine, I don't have a stitch in the ditch foot. If you did, that's what you would use to stitch right up against that edge from the top. What I'm going to use is a zipper foot. Here's a, here's a narrow, uh, let me zoom in. Here's a uh, narrow zipper foot. There's the hole for the needle so that when this goes on the fabric, I can, I can keep it, ride this foot right up along the edge and I'll get stitching really close. But on this, then I need to use the same thread I used on most of the quilting to do that. But I decided to switch to a black thread for the, uh, for the bobbin so that won't show on the other side. So let me get my other foot in here. These are easy to change on this machine. Uh, you can do it with uh, just thumb tightening. Some machines will have a screwdriver that you want to tighten it with, but this one works that way. So it's just a matter of getting that, I like to tuck that thread under there. Let me also pull that up. Okay. So it's just a matter of stitching right along that edge. Let me uh, see if I can. And uh, yeah, I gotta adjust my stitch length. This uh, machine is set up on a treadle, and I need. 
need to replace the, or tighten the belt. Normally I don't have to keep reaching over to turn the, hand, the wheel by hand to get it going, but this one's loose so it's slipping. And it often takes me a while with a, you know, with a machine that I'm not familiar with when I first start. It takes me a while to learn exactly how tight to make that belt. But this one needs to be tighter, so I'll be adjusting that soon. Now, I don't know if you can if you can see the stitching. It does show a little bit, but honestly not much. And here's what it looks like on the other side. Pretty well hidden because I've got black uh, bobbin thread in. So let me go around this quickly and I'll show you the finish deal. Of course, it, this little quilt really goes pretty fast. A, uh, a full size quilt got a much bigger job on your hands. So uh, plan your time accordingly. You don't want to uh, you don't want to rush it though. You know, it's really oftentimes the, the finishing touches that really can make the book look better or or frankly ruin it. So, you know, there's, there's no point in rushing really any stage. But rushing the binding is, is something that uh, I have been guilty of myself. And uh, I'll tell you from experience, it's not that easy to take the binding off and redo it. Again, if you were doing this, if you wanted to do the stitching on the back by hand, you would have done everything the same that I just did uh, as far as it is, uh, doing the mitered corners, doing the joining of the ends, sewing it onto the top, folding it to the back. Then the only difference would be that you would be sewing it on by hand from the back side rather than stitching uh, in the ditch or close to the edge from the top side. close to the edge when I added the binding on the front, I've got a pretty narrow binding here and there's it's really even hard to see if the corners are mitered or not because there's so little fabric. But I didn't want a big wide statement binding on this. I just wanted a little bit of uh, you know, a narrow edge to sort of tie it together. I thought about using the same green that I have on the backing, and I tried it uh, on the on it, and it just it didn't look right. So I decided my first instinct was black was the right one. Finished binding. Um, let me zoom out again. So there's the uh, the quilt with the finished binding on the. There's the front, and let me just turn this thread. And there's the back. 
So that's uh, that's how I do my binding by by machine. And again, it's, it's essentially, essentially how I do it by hand. Also, I just do the stitching on the back by hand. So there you have it. Happy quilting. So there it is, finished and hanging. Happy quilting.